Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Good morning and happy Friday. So I want to come on here and dish some Real Housewives tea because it seems like all my shows are back on. Now, the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City has ended, but I really enjoyed that season. I told y'all about that early in the year. I was definitely here for it, watched every episode. So yesterday was the reunion, and I was so surprised that the reunion was as explosive as it's been because the first reunion was crazy with them going back and forth and, you know, people calling Jen out on her shit and, you know, holding her to task. Um, but in this second reunion, we get to hear from Miss Cosby, okay? Miss, you know, Miss Pastor Mary Cosby. Now, I don't know. I like Mary because she kind of stood up for herself. She wasn't trying to kiss Jen's ass. You know, she's trying to just hold down her church. Of course, she's very diva-ish, you know, very shady and messy, honey. But that's what these shows promote, right? So anyhow... For y'all who don't know, Mary is married to her husband, Robert Sr. <laughs> Robert Sr. is also her step-grandfather, which to me was creepy when I first heard it because he is 20 years her senior and he watched her grow up. And basically the grandmother betrothed the granddaughter to her husband before she died. So this was a backstory that Mary was explaining that she really didn't get to explain on the show. But she says, my grandmother told me from herself that she wanted me to take her place. She said, basically, Robert Sr. was 20 years younger than my grandmother. My grandmother, my grandmother felt like she robbed his youth. So she said, if anything ever happens, I want you to marry one of my girls because I know they will be loyal to you and treat you good like you treated me. So once her grandmother died, Mary said that she and Robert Sr. prayed for the relationship for two years before eventually tying the knot. And basically, they felt like it was God's will that they come together. And then she also made it clear that that was part of her inheritance, that if she didn't marry Robert Sr., she would not be getting the inheritance, the church building and everything else. So it just got really weird. And then Andy started asking her like, OK, well, are you in love with him? Damn it. Are y'all sleeping in the same bed? What's up? G give us the tea, boo. Give us the tea. So y'all go ahead and check this out. You've been married for 22 years. 22 years. Mm -hmm. And are you physical? Um, maybe since the last few years, no. Do you sleep in the same bed? No. You have separate bedrooms. Mm -hmm. Got it. You can't go through a marriage for 22 years and be happy. <laughs> like every single Chanel, he's buying it for me. All my designer things, Robert Sr. has gotten from me. And we're happy. All right, y'all just heard what Miss Mary Cosby had to say, honey. You know, to me, she's saying that you can be in a marriage for 20-something years. Of course, no marriage, no relationship is perfect. But um, she's saying that her husband bought her Chanel bags and bought her, you know, all these luxury items. But is she saying that she's also crying? So I'm like, you know, are you really as happy as you're trying to make it seem? Because just because you have a lot of luxury items or you've been gifted a lot of things does not necessarily equate to happiness. Because if she was really happy, she wouldn't be constantly emotional when always talking about him and their relationship. Especially being that they've been together for 20-something years. They have, a, I think, what, a 19-year-old child together. Um, the whole situation is odd. But it makes me think, like... You know, if Robert Sr. was 20 years younger than her grandmother, well, what the hell was the grandmother on? You know, has she been grooming Robert Sr.? Like, it just sounds very weird how, like, this relationship has been passed down to the next generation. I mean, by that logic, if something happens to Mary, is Robert Sr. then going to mess with somebody else in the family? Like, it is a very odd pairing, but, you know, it seems to work for them. And I just think it's odd that the grandmother would basically give her granddaughter to him, even though there's no blood relationship. Like I said, he watched her grow up. How long had him and the grandmother been kind of plotting this? Because to me, it seems like it's not something that had been sporadic or out the blue. I think they might have been planning it for a while that she'd be the one betrothed to him. Very, very Game of Thrones-ish. <laughs> but you know what? It is what it is, honey. As long as them Chanel bags and them loud-ass outfits keep coming in, she ain't worried about it. 
But yeah, I definitely love the role of Housewives of Salt Lake City. I'm sure they'll be bringing them back for a second season. I think this is one of the best first seasons for any new show on the Real Housewives. So they definitely kicked down the door, just like the Real Housewives of New Jersey and Atlanta. And I am watching the Atlanta show, and um, it's good. Kenya is definitely on some weirdo, selfish type shit. You know, bringing her daughter. Meanwhile, everybody else's kids have to stay home. You know, her feeding her face. Meanwhile, everybody else is having to wait for lunch. You know, there's been a lot of shady stuff happening on Kenya and even Latoya's end. But it seems like they're trying to work through a lot of those problems. So, honey, I'm just waiting for the stripper gate. Okay, that's that's the part I'm waiting for. So I can find out who done hooked up with the damn stripper. Because that's the whole premise of the Real Housewives of Atlanta. That's all they were pushing this season. So anyways... On to my third favorite show, okay? The Real Housewives of New Jersey are definitely trending, and I caught the first episode. You know, every time I want to like Teresa, you know, like just genuinely give her a chance, she just does things to leave a bad taste in my mouth. So if you guys do not know, basically, this is all over social media. Well, well, you know the Real Housewives social media. But what happened is that basically Teresa Judice is somehow in her feelings and upset at Jackie Goldschneider. I think that's how you say her last name. Um, She feels like her analogy about her daughter, Gia, is distasteful. (laughs) Bitch, what? So if y'all don't know, what happened is that basically Jackie and Teresa, they've always had, you know, beef and, you know, little tit for tat. Because Teresa definitely thinks she's the queen bee because she's been on the show the longest and everything else. And, you know, she's been through a lot. And so... Jackie just does not back down to her or anybody. Jackie holds her own. So she wanted to kind of bury the hatchet, and she invited Teresa to her husband's birthday party. Looked like a beautiful affair. You can tell that Jackie and her husband, um, Evan, they definitely have a lot of love for each other. And you could even tell, like, when there were certain scenes where they were kissing or holding each other, and the camera would pan to Teresa. Teresa definitely looked angry. Like, she looked pissed off. She looked irritated. Have a guy for she has weathered so much. Maybe because Juicy Joe never showed her that much compassion on television. You know, he's always calling her his bitch wife and all that stuff. Maybe she feels a way. But anyhow, um, of course, Teresa wants to blame this on the alcohol. But mm, I don't know. I think that's a cop out. So what Teresa starts doing is that after Jackie is nice enough to come and speak to her and the husband comes over and he's like, yeah, I got this buddy in, in D.C. or New York, honey. But they want to hook Teresa up. They're like, you know, he's a really good guy. You know, he has himself together. Um, so they're kind of trying to play matchmaker. And it seems to like really annoy Teresa. Uh, he's half Italian. Half, half Italian, half Jewish. Half Jewish. Jewish. Uh, he's a cold looking guy. So then after that, Teresa, honey, just starts floating all around the party, just just telling all of Evan and Jackie's business, telling everybody, have you heard? Have you heard the tea? I heard Evan be cheating and shit in the gym. And I'm just like, this is really messy. Like, why would you start this at the birthday party? I can see she just told Marge Jr., (laughs) you know, but then she went on to tell Melissa. She went on to tell the other woman. Then she went on to her brother. She was just doing too much. So I want y'all to go ahead and check out this video really quick. I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. I hear rumors about Evan. What, you heard the stuff about him? Like, what kind of stuff? Like when he goes to the gym, he's screwing around. <gasps> Have you heard that? From who? I don't know. I can't even remember now. You know me, I forget hey, things. what is it? Hey, but I'm just saying, like, I heard something. I haven't heard anything. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to know about it. It's his birthday. Are you insane? You're from Ted No, no, I didn't hear something. I, I don't want to hear that. I don't know. I'm just, I did, didn't hear that. What is it that you I think, heard? I don't know. Like that I mean, does stuff at the gym. What the f- is she doing right now? You don't just blurt things out like that. What's, What's up? That he like cheats on her. How do we erase that? Wow. Someone needs to press rewind because that is not okay. Jackie's over there prancing around in a little pink dress. She said. I don't see it. Like, like years ago, I used to be. She thinks this is like the best night. I heard Evan like <laughs> when he goes to the gym, he's crying. And she has absolutely no idea that Teresa is walking around this party making a complete fool out of her. You heard that? You heard that? I swear I did hear it last year. And I always kept my mouth shut. I'm drinking tonight, so I was able to say it. But I go, why are people saying this? I have 
I'm not from this area. I don't know. And, He's from you know. I'm from the area. I haven't heard it here. You shouldn't hear anything. I don't know. All right, so y'all just saw that video of Teresa. This is at this man's birthday party, and she's kicking and she's kicking up all this mess that's just so unnecessary. So then the opening scene. <laughs> so we're kind of going backwards. You see Jackie confronting Teresa, like you know, I heard what was being said at my husband's party, and this was not cool. And Teresa takes no personal responsibility. She tries to shift the blame. So Jackie basically tells her how it is like what if i said your daughter gia was out here snorting coke would you be okay with that oh teresa flips it oh she's the victim how dare you talk about my 20 year old daughter how dare you talk about her you're a cunt oh teresa gets big mad honey y'all go ahead and check this out teresa i need you to admit whoever told you this had no evidence and was just saying words that you took and ran with i never asked for evidence I'm just letting you know somebody put this out there. I need you to okay. admit that this was so, a lie. I need you to admit this was a lie. Clear my husband's name. I need you to admit you were spreading a baseless rumor with absolutely no evidence. It's right, the I words of somebody. No, I don't give a shit about that apologizing. Part. I, don't apo I don't give a shit about that. Listen, I'm not a stupid girl. I'm a fucking lawyer. Okay. okay so okay. remember this. Yeah. All right, Jackie, I get it. Every two seconds you tell us, to, I'm a lawyer, I'm a lawyer, I'm, a lawyer. I'm a smart, I'm smart. You know what? I don't give a sh if you're a lawyer. You don't call the shots. So hey, if you're not a stupid girl, you know your husband's not cheating on you, f stand up for yourself. What the f was she saying? You need to admit so, that you, you spread, I did not spread a rumor. I heard a rumor. Okay, well, you know what? I heard that Gia snorts coke in the bathroom at parties, okay? I heard it. I don't know where I heard it from. I mean, I heard from somebody. You're a bitch. I mean, but it's the same thing. So how is that not the you're same? Now you're How is not the you're same? You're Is it not the same you? You should never go out and throw kids. something at me. Throw it. Oh, you're a I'm living the life that you want to live. What is going on? I win. No, you don't. Your f***ing husband's cheating on you. I That's why you're crying, because you're I f***ing no What happened? Her, she's what a happened? She what brought happened? up my daughter. What she's happened? a f***ing all right so y'all just saw that video like i said i can't take Teresa's victimhood seriously you know should children be brought up in in beefs and stuff like that absolutely not but she didn't bring up gia's name to blast gia or say oh i saw a person with my own two eyes gia snorting coke she was using it as an analogy as she should you're very close to Gia because that's your daughter, just like she's very close to her husband. She doesn't want her husband's reputation being ruined and sullied because you're bored, just like you don't want your daughter's reputation being sullied. You know, the problem is Teresa has met her match and she feels a way. And I'm glad that Jackie took up for herself and her husband. That's what you're supposed to fucking do when you're in an actual loving relationship. And what I find very funny, because, you know, I'm, I'm a connoisseur of all this bullshit, okay? Um, been watching the Jersey show from day damn one, but I recall back in 2017, were you not upset at Kim D? You know what I'm saying? Kim D. LaPola, you were upset and trying to fight her at a party because she was spreading rumors that your ex-husband, Juicy Joe, was cheating on you. Let's go ahead and play this damn flashback. Y'all go ahead and check this out. Kim, you're so f***ed up. You talked about my husband yeah, two years ago. Did Her. you see him f***ing another girl? No, I did not. All right, then, so why did you go to f***ing see that? Because I feel no, like it. No, because, because I feel like it. Because oh, I feel like it. God. You're a f***ing wait, no, you're, you're a dirty bitch. You're a white trash. You're, you're the one who was in f***ing jail, not me, bitch. All right, y'all just saw that Real Housewives flashback. So my thing is, Teresa, you did the same thing Kim D did. Kim D was running around, you know what I'm saying, time out, you and Juicy Joe, and you didn't like it. You try to confront her. You want to fight her and wild out, but then you turn around and do it to somebody else, and you're trying to excuse it and say that it's okay, and now you're trying to play victim and deflect because she brought up your daughter in an analogy. No, ma'am, you're conflating two issues. And that's what I get tired of a lot of people running around here doing, trying to conflate issues and make it seem like it's the same damn thing. Absolutely not. Her bringing up your child's name, using that as an analogy, was done to wake your ass up and to show you that what you were doing with her husband was not okay. But of course, it's easy to play victim and not take personal responsibility for the hand that you played to why your daughter's name was mentioned. 
So, of course, Teresa's being confronted um, by different, you know, outlets like U.S. Weekly and E.T. And basically, she's taking no personal responsibility for what she played. Y'all can go ahead and check out this small snippet here. I have to ask, why bring up this rumor you heard at all, knowing how you felt about similar rumors being brought up in the past? Listen, I was fine with the rumors being brought up. Like, I stood up for myself. That happens. You know what I mean? Like, someone, it's like, it's like your girlfriend's telling you what's going on. Or someone's telling you, like, and if it's not going on, then you stand up for yourself. So, you know, I just wanted her to know I didn't ruin the birthday party. So I just wanted her to know that this rumor was out there and I wanted her to stand up for herself and defend herself. So the rumor would stop because, listen, the rumor was out there. And if it wasn't, it's not like I made it up. It was out there. I'm not saying it's true. and I'm not saying it's not true. Like, I didn't say that. I just wanted her to know from a girl's girl that it was out there and for her to do something about it, you know? Why go around the party though and kind of ask people if they've heard it instead of just going to her right away I and privately? I wasn't gonna go to her, I was, she was throwing a party. Like but it, it, was, it was her you could do it. Party. You could do it not at the party. I was drinking a lot of tequila and then I don't know, just, and then I was looking at her and I, you know, this is how I work. Like just something clicks in my brain you know, that's, I mean, I don't know if that happens to you. Like that happens to me. Like I'm very spontaneous. Like, I don't know, like something just clicked in my brain. And I was telling my girlfriends, like I was telling, it's, it's not like I told strangers. And I told my sister-in-law, I think I told Margaret. Margaret and I are close. So that's- Right, you did. It all right, so you guys just saw a snippet of that interview. And that's my issue is that Teresa can dish it, but she can't take it. She can disrespect other people, talk crazy to them, talk about their families. The same way she spread the rumors about Melissa and Joe, her brother, and, you know, basically had the whole world hating them, you know, because she wasn't happy in her own situation. She's trying to do the same thing to Jackie. And the problem is you can't sit there and start a rumor and then get mad at the person that you're starting a rumor about when they address you. And personally, I don't even believe this rumor. Not saying I know any of these people, but I really don't hear Evan's name like that, even on the blogs, like how we used to hear Juicy Joe. Um, I believe, honestly, this is another snake gate situation when like how Nene was claiming she had all this audio of, you know, different housewives talking shit. And then when it came down to it, there was no recording. What do you mean you can't? You told everybody about it, now you can't no, say I, nothing. No, I didn't tell everybody you about it. You told some people. Nene, you know there is no recording. So however you want to call it, a recording, audio, she made the entire thing up in an effort to make everyone believe that Cynthia is such a bad person. Bitch, you are lying there was no snake gate so I think this is just another thing just to you know bring eyes to the show and to have Teresa's name trending and the thing is she claims she doesn't even remember who told her this so why even spread it you know if you have no solid evidence mind your business because she's always the first one to cry when anybody brings up anything going on in her household with her situation with Joe now, um, Jackie was interviewed, and I am glad that Jackie's not backing down. She's standing 10 toes deep in her comment, and she's basically saying, it was an analogy. If she wants to get mad and get upset, not my problem, but I'm not taking back nothing. You go, girl. Y'all go ahead and check this out. You regret um, bringing up Gia in that conversation? No, because I, I wasn't starting a rumor about Gia. I was giving an analogy, and I think that, like, almost everyone will see that that's an analogy. All right, so y'all just heard what Jackie had to say, and I agree with her 100% that she owes nobody any type of apology. If Teresa can go around her party spreading rumors, she has every right to confront Teresa and use her child as an analogy so she can get the damn point. So I'm glad that Jackie is standing 10 toes down in that. I just think that at this point, Teresa needs to stop playing victim. If she doesn't want people being messy to her, she needs to stop being messy to other people. Let me not forget, um, Gia did respond back, and this is what Gia had to say about the situation. So basically, Dina Manzo had posted um, a message and Gia went on to repost it onto her page. And it's also a message that comes from the lawyer as well. So Dina Manzo says, I did not watch, but I totally agree. A grown woman should never use an analogy like this about a minor ever, especially about our beautiful at Gia Judice. Jackie needs to make a public apology immediately. So this is a statement from the lawyer that Gia Judice reposted, and it says, Gia is a wonderful, smart, strong, beautiful human being, 
And what was done to her tonight was wrong on so many levels. For a grown ass, I'm so, so smart. I'm a lawyer woman to bring up Gia's name into an argument and place an accusation with such weighted consequences is inconceivable. I cannot fathom what would possess someone to create a false narrative that could have severe consequences for the innocent party involved. A 19 year old at the time who was in no way involved in anything, what cast members choose to do to each other is the nature of the reality TV beast. This was too far. So that message was written by their entertainment attorney. Her name is Corinne Finchback. So that is what Gia posted. And then Dina Manzo reposted that as well. So like I said, in my personal opinion, Gia, unfortunately, was just a casualty in this mess. Um, but at the end of the day, Gia should be mad at her mother because her mother bought this on herself and her mother started a bunch of shit. You can't tell people how to react to certain situations. Jackie reacted with that analogy because she thought it was the right thing to do because your mother was disrespecting her and her husband. But I'm, you know, it is messed up that Gia's name got brought in to it but again you can't tell people how to react so anyways that's all the tea i have concerning the real housewives i'm gonna be keeping up with all these seasons and i'll probably be doing more updates throughout the you know weeks or whatever so anyways let me know your thoughts how do you guys feel about the real housewives of salt lake city how did you guys feel about that show in general i really enjoyed it and then what do you guys think about the reunion where you know pastor mary's finally breaking down the dynamic between her and grandpa robert um <laughs> that just sounds so weird and then how do you guys feel about what's going on right now with the real housewives with Atlanta. And then last but not least, are you team Teresa Judice on this? Or are you team Jackie on this situation? And how do you feel about Teresa being messy and doing the same thing that she tried to basically go off on Kim D for doing a few years ago, only to do it to Jackie? And do you feel like she's just trying to play victim because Jackie brought up her daughter in an analogy? So that way she doesn't have to take personal responsibility for what she did. So let me know y'all thoughts. Leave a comment. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to thumbs up the video. Uh, last but not least, make sure you hit that notification bell so we can be done with the notification squad. And I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces.